The new generation Honda HRV is a very different small SUV to the model that came before it, but I'm going to tell you why that's both good and bad in this review. G'day, I'm Matt. This one here is the Honda HRV Hybrid. Yep, it's got a hybrid available and there's a more affordable petrol model, if that's what matters to you. But affordable is all relative because this is a pricey little thing. There's heaps more to tell you about it too. Thanks for watching. If you've already subscribed, I appreciate it. And please, if you haven't already, I'd love it if you could hit the like button, hit subscribe, and also hit the bell to keep up to date with all of my reviews. I'm aiming for at least two videos a week. Plenty more coming. There are only two versions available for the Honda HRV, and I reckon that's a nice change for what we've seen from so many other brands that offer so many different variants. Look, there's a choice of petrol or hybrid. It's as simple as that. The entry level version is the petrol one. It's called the VIX and it comes pretty well equipped when it comes to the good stuff. You've got LED lights, you've got 18 inch alloy wheels, touchscreen media system, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, dual zone climate control, and plenty more besides that. Cloth trim though, manual seats, but you get both of those things in this top spec version as well, which costs more than $10,000 more and you're getting hybrid powertrain technology as a result but you're also getting blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert in this top spec model as well, which you should get in the base model. So that's not very good of Honda, is it? Do you reckon it's good value though? It's a lot of money for a little car. When it comes to alternatives to the HRV, it really depends what you are prioritizing. If hybrid is your big priority, then you should be looking at the likes of the Toyota Yaris Cross. I've also done a review on that. You can hit the link at the top of your screen and it'll take you there. Uh, that's a pretty practical little thing and it does have some interesting traits and some really strange characteristics, but I think it offers really good value for money, especially compared to the hybrid version of the HRV. And look, if your budget is bigger and you're not so worried about spending $47,000 on a small SUV, then maybe a Toyota Corolla Cross could be a really good option for you. Again, with a choice of hybrid available, hit my link there and you'll see my review of that car. And that car really did surprise me. I was blown away by it, to be frank, although the base model version isn't as convincing as it could be. But it might be right for you if you need practicality because it's got five seats and a much bigger boot than both the Yaris Cross or the HRV. And then there's the new Subaru Crosstrek. Now, Crosstrek is a new name. It's the XV, but reimagined essentially. It's got a bunch of different tech available. It's got all wheel drive as standard and hybrid available too. So make sure you watch my review by hitting the link up there too. It's hard not to find this new generation version of the HRV to be quite attractive. It's well proportioned, and I think that has a lot to do with it. It's just over 4.3 meters long, and it's got these interesting rear door handles. Those rear doors are quite large. Those door handles, um, yeah, that's a bit of a trait of the HRV. I don't love them. I find that when they're wet, like if it's rained overnight, your hand can slip off it. So that's not fantastic. Now, let's check out the boot because there's a lot to talk about here. You get an electric boot if you buy the top spec version of this SUV, but you don't get a big boot. It's 304 litres, which is comparatively tiny uh, compared to the last generation version of the HRV, especially because it was a lot more accommodating when it came to luggage capacity. So it's not gonna be right for everyone for that reason, but at least you get a secondary storage section underneath here, uh, which you could maybe put some wet clothes or maybe your milk when you go to the shops or something like that. No spare tire though. So that's another bit of a downer if you are interested in this car. Look, obviously it does have the practicality of those magic seats. We'll show you some footage now of how they operate. That does offer you a lot more practicality if you're not gonna use the rear seats all the time. But if you are using the rear seats a lot and you still need a big boot, then maybe you need to look at something other than the HRV. I love the interior of this new generation HRV and all new generation Honda products for that matter. They just have this really interesting but minimalist vibe to it and I dig it. And I'm not usually into minimalism, but the thing that gets me is that it still manages to have all the controls you would expect with knobs and dials and buttons, you know I love those. And there's these really interesting vent designs as well. So you've got these 
vents that sort of poke out through the dashboard and they've got lovely controls to them. And you know, most brands just think that as long as it can move, it's fine. But Honda's put a little bit more attention to detail into it. Maybe that's why they charge so much. Now, these seats are also really good. They're super comfy, lovely trim on this top spec model. And I reckon it's a really comfortable and enjoyable place to sit. So is it practical? Yes, it is. It's got a pair of cup holders between the seats. You've got a decent sized covered center console bin. Storage here for your phone. There's another shelf above that, but you do have to plug in for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And that means that it is a bit messy. You sort of have to have a dangling cable, which is a bit hard to put away. Might be a bit of a minor thing for you, but it does ruin the aesthetic of the cabin a little bit for me. Also, the fact that the USB ports are both exposed might be a little bit of an iffy one for you. There's also bottle holders in the doors and it is a pretty practical cabin up front. So can the same be said for the back seat? The HRV is not gonna be right for everyone because it's only a four seater. So if you need five seats and you might be surprised how often you actually need five seats, especially if you're a parent and you've got the grandparents up and maybe you're all going out for a trip, then missing that middle extra seat can be a bit of a pain in the bum. But look, there are a lot of people who only will ever need the front seats anyway, so that might not matter. Look, it does pay into your decision-making process, no doubt about that. For this reason, it wouldn't be suitable for my family because we are the sort of family who often fills up all five seats in an SUV. So yeah, that's a bit of an issue. But when it comes to space back here, this seat is set for my height at 182 centimeters or six foot. Just have a go at how much space I've got here acres of leg room, lots of foot room, although it is on a bit of a slope, so it's not the most comfortable seating position. And you've got decent headroom as well. You will have to watch your head getting in and out though, if you are of the taller variety. And the seat itself is quite sculpted, so you sort of sink into it, and it's a comfy seat. Now, if you have kids, there are isofix points on the window seats and top tether points as well. Only two top tethers because there's only two seats. Uh, and when it comes to the amenities back here, it's pretty good. You've got directional air vents down here, a couple of USB ports. They're the old school USB-A type points, so they aren't necessarily as up-to-date as some of the newer SUVs out there. But you've also got map pockets with these secondary little pockets on the backs of the seats as well. That's really good for storing a phone or something like that. And then you've got cup holders up here on the armrests, uh, which is good because there's nothing down lower on the doors for storage. There's also a flip down armrest with cup holders, but it just sort of flops down. It doesn't actually stay up, which isn't the most comfortable position to sit. Anyway, like I said, four seats, is that gonna work for you? As I mentioned, two options available in the HRV, the entry level version, the petrol powered one has a 1.5 liter four cylinder petrol engine. You'll see the outputs for it on your screen now. They are okay, but not setting any new standards and there's a CVT automatic and it's front wheel drive as well. Then there's this one, which is the hybrid version. It's a 1.5 liter four cylinder engine as well, but it adds a battery pack and electric motor to the combination. And you'll see the outputs on your screen are significantly more punchy than the petrol entry level version. It runs an eCVT automatic transmission, so electronic continuously variable transmission. The electric motor is integrated into the transmission and it's front wheel drive too. If you can hear that, that's the petrol engine of this hybrid engine combination kicking into life. And it does do that quite a bit and quite noisily. That's one of the things that I like least about the hybrid version of the HRV. But then again, I've driven the petrol one and it's noisy pretty much all the time. So maybe this is a bit better because you do get some moments of solitude and silence like we're having right now. The car is just running on battery power at this point in time. You can monitor it with a little screen display which shows you whether you're feeding battery power to the wheels or you're using the battery and the petrol engine or whether you're feeding energy back to the battery by regen braking as is happening right now as we're just rolling along and it's just feeding just a little bit of energy back to the battery. Look, it is interesting to watch that happen and it is 
a relatively efficient little car. I'm gonna tell you those details in the next section, but it's also pretty punchy. This little 1.5 litre engine and the battery pack and electric motor really makes for a pretty good combination. And when you do put your foot down, it does pull along pretty well although it does make a bit of racket doing so. But I think for people who are gonna be doing what I'm doing right now, just driving around my local area and maybe not asking all that much of the powertrain, it's gonna be perfectly suitable. It's at moments like that when you just pull away from an intersection and you're running on EV that you notice that this does work very well for urban driving. It's just when you get up to higher speeds and you're asking a bit more of this powertrain that it starts to feel, well, a little bit underdone. So it's a CVT automatic transmission, which if you're unaware means that it can basically just sound like the engine is flaring. It's just going at times and it's just not the most pleasant drive experience. It doesn't make it feel the most refined for the money especially, but look, I think that the transmission does a pretty good job in most situations and the way that it does jump between the petrol and electric modes is impressive. There's also paddle shifters on the steering wheel. Now, they're not the traditional paddles. You're not gonna go into a sport mode and jump up and down the gears. Instead, it's to increase or decrease the amount of regen braking response. If you have the regen braking set to the most aggressive setting, as I do right now, so it's on five bars, it's not like an EV. It won't come to a really rapid stop. And in fact, on a flat, it won't actually come to a stop. We're still just rolling along at about 8Ks an hour right now. So it's not necessarily like an EV in that regard, but hey, it's not an EV. The brake pedal feel is another thing I wanna talk about. Look, it is just a bit hard to get used to. Um, sometimes you feel like you've pressed it hard enough to stop and maybe you don't actually come to a stop. So that may take just a little bit of getting used to. I reckon it's a pretty livable little car. It's got nice steering, it just turns accurately, and it's got really nice weight to the steering as well. Another thing that I'm pretty fond of is the ride. I think that the balance between comfort and control is pretty well struck in this car in terms of ride. Sure, you can feel at times that when you go over a bumpy section of road, it might, you know, buck and bumble a little bit, but it's not anywhere near as unpleasant as some of the other small SUVs that I've tested. The petrol version of the HRV, I've driven it as well, and look, it isn't quite as pleasant to live with. It feels a little bit less tied down and a little bit uncomfortable when it comes to the ride. Um, it's sort of always jostling and jumping around. And this car does suffer that a little bit at higher speeds as well, but the petrol version just isn't quite as convincing as the hybrid one. I reckon this could be a really great SUV for someone who wants to have a hybrid and is okay with spending a little bit extra to get something that is maybe a little bit more special feeling in terms of the interior experience anyway. And it's also pretty real world fuel efficient. Let's talk about that now. If you're considering a HRV and you can't quite stretch to the hybrid, then the petrol model does have relatively good fuel efficiency. It is a little bit less pleasant to drive, but the fuel consumption, if you can achieve it at 5.6 litres per 100 k's, is commendable. I saw a little bit higher than that when I drove the petrol a few months ago. It was sort of more towards 6.5 litres per 100 k's, so still relatively efficient, but not as powerful or as enjoyable as this hybrid version. Speaking of, the official combined cycle fuel consumption figure for the hybrid version is 4.3 litres per 100 k's, which is what you should be able to achieve across a mix of driving. And look, I haven't got quite that good a result, but I'm pretty happy with what I have seen. You'll see it on your screen now. That was over a mix of driving, including urban and highway and freeway, and just a lot of this day-to-day -day drudgery driving that we all do all the time. What do you reckon? Pretty good? The Honda HRV was awarded a four-star ANCAP safety rating in 2022, which is not the maximum five stars, so it might not be right for you based on that. It does have some of the tech you would expect as standard across the entire range, including autonomous emergency braking and lane keeping assist, and it's also got a reversing camera and parking sensors too. 
Plus there's traffic sign recognition and adaptive cruise control on all versions of this car. Buy the top spec hybrid and you get blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. Honda really should offer that as standard across the range. They're doing their customers a disservice by not offering it as standard. And for airbag coverage, there are only six fitted. Most SUVs these days have more than that, but still you've got dual front, front side, and full length curtain coverage. Honda offers a five year unlimited kilometer warranty for the car. And if you buy the hybrid version, you get an eight year warranty for the battery pack. The services are every 12 months or 10,000 Ks, which is shorter than some rivals, but they are cheap at $199 each for the first five services. Plus there's five years of roadside assist included when you buy the car. So it does tick a few boxes, but it could be maybe a bit better. I've made it pretty clear in this review that the Honda HRV in this new generation version isn't gonna be for everyone. Four seats, and lacking some stuff and costing too much are the things that count against it. But hey, it looks fantastic. It's got a really nice interior. And if you can deal with that four seat layout, you'll get a pretty impressive compact SUV. The hybrid is the pick, but it's costing quite a bit considering you're not getting things like leather interior trim or a sunroof or anything like that. So you can get more luxury for your money if you shop around. But tell me what you think. Is the HRV the right SUV for you? If not, what is? I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.